Good news, fellow Earthlings, at last. Climate change is on the US presidential debate agenda in a meaningful way. With 20 plus Democrats vying to be the candidate who goes up against Trump, it was gratifying to hear one of them talk about climate change as the biggest geopolitical threat that we face. Thank you, Beto. Thank you, Jay Inslee, for saying as president it would be your number one, two, and three top priorities. Pete Buttigieg even mentioned the carbon sequestration capacity of soil, showing real literacy on the issue and also including rural America in the solution. Then there was the recent news that billionaire activist Tom Steyer is joining the race. Now, it's a little bit late, but his number one issue, climate change. Some people were not happy that over two nights and nearly four hours of democratic debates, there was only 15 minutes of airtime devoted to climate change. But I say a whole 15 minutes, that is the good news. Back in 2016, during the Clinton-Trump presidential debates, Hillary got in two points on climate change in debates one and two. In the third debate, not a single mention. And Trump was never asked a single question on climate change by one of the moderators. That was ridiculous and pandering. Cut to 2019, and there is no room for sidelining climate change which, as I've said before, is the good news. And before you try to tell me again that more time needs to be devoted to this issue during presidential debates, I 100% agree. I 100% agree. I'm in total agreement. 100%. Though it's not just Elizabeth, Kamala and the gang who need to talk more. We all do. We all need to stop shutting up about climate change. I know there are a lot of us who are not holding back, but it turns out a lot of Americans are not talking about climate change because they have this mistaken idea that it's only just over half of the US population that accept the scientific consensus that climate change is happening and is caused by us, which is wrong. 69% of Americans believe that climate change is a serious threat and that action needs to be taken. Now, 69% isn't just a majority. In the Senate, that's a super majority. Obviously, 69% of the population includes Republicans and Democrats. Because 90 degree weather in Alaska, 60 tornadoes touching down in a three day period in the Midwest, rising sea level, drowning Miami. Yes, Rachel Maddow, that one's for you. That's not partisan weather. We're all in this together was front and center of the 2008 election when both candidates, Republican John McCain and Democrat Barack Obama, both talked about what they would do about a heating up atmosphere and planet. So if that's where we were in 2008 and we have a super majority in 2019 who believe in climate change, what has been happening on Capitol Hill? Before Obama even moved into the White House, the Koch brothers and other fossil fuel industry heavyweights swung into high gear. They were doing everything they could to sow doubt into the science, the scientific consensus. They were thwarting any effort to curb carbon emissions. Americans of Prosperity launched the infamous No Carbon Tax Pledge. If you were a politician and you signed it, you got rewarded with political donations from the oil industry. But this buying of our political system, that's a whole other can of worms. Let's just hope that Bernie's plea that we stand up to special interests and Tom Steyer's second uh, campaign issue, which is political reform, are soon the subject of a good news update. Meanwhile, the general political and mainstream media reticence to talk meaningfully about climate change, I think, is symptomatic of how other Americans are self-silencing and not talking about climate change under the misguided notion that there isn't consensus. It's crazy. To get elected and to have friends, one has to be a little bit popular. To sell ad space, you have to show high readership. So then you avoid an issue if you think people don't like it. The problem is this not talking about it, just in case the other person doesn't believe in climate change, is setting up a vicious circle because it is erroneously promoting the idea that the majority of us aren't really, really concerned. And it's also delaying us taking meaningful action. And we know now we can't delay, we have to take meaningful action right now, so enough is enough. The Sunrise Movement and other voices that are calling for their elected officials to devote more time to climate change 
are absolutely right because elected officials are supposed to put their constituents' welfare first and reducing carbon emissions would be taking care of all of us. Mainstream media also needs to get fully on board. There is no rationale for objectivity, aka impartiality, showing no bias when it comes to accepted science. 97% of scientists, that is a super duper majority, say that greenhouse gases are rising to intolerable, life-threatening levels. We're causing it. We need to stop it. Those are the talking points. Start talking.